Greetings. Now this video is going to get even more esoteric than some of the other videos about monetary policy, but it will provide substantial proof that the US Fed funds rate, just like the Fed funds rates of other advanced economies, such as the Eurozone and Japan, will remain effectively zero forever. And that adjustment is working its way through the system, but the Federal Reserve, as we saw, still believes that the long-term Fed funds rate is around 3% or so, which is crazy. It's like they're not even looking at any other country or any of their own data. I'm not talking about them looking at data that is not produced by other Federal Reserve branches, but even their own data. They are so theoretical that they can't even use what they themselves produce. Now, to that effect, I will introduce you to a concept known as the Wuja Shadow Fed Funds Rate. Now, this was some obscure research done by two economists, Cynthia Wu and Fandora Jia, some years ago. And very few people have ever heard about it, but it's far more important than many realize, perhaps even the two creators realize, because it predicts the need for exponentially rising monetary liquidity and provides further proof of the exponential technological deflation inherent to the modern economy and why the two match up very well. Why, in fact, monetary creation, money printing, has to rise exponentially just to match exponential technological deflation. So we go to this chart, and it's produced by the Atlanta Federal Reserve. So even though it's produced by the Federal Reserve, they don't look at it and therefore still say, well, rates will have to be 3% or something like that, which is absurd. It goes to 1990, and the blue line is the official Fed funds rate, and the green line is the shadow rate. And you can see before the 2009 crisis, the two matched up and the Fed funds rate was always in a positive zone. After the 2009 crisis, once the age of quantitative easing began, the Fed funds rate went to zero and stayed zero for a long time, for several years, and it should have stayed at zero forever. But the additional money printing done was meant to simulate a negative Fed funds rate. And that's the green line over here. And the green line is very interesting because it is a metric of how much quantitative easing is being done. Now, even this Wuja shadow rate is not complete because as I often say, monetary creation is a worldwide phenomenon. It's borderless. Even if the US stops money printing, if other central banks are printing a lot, the net effect to the world is the same. And that is exactly what happened in 2018 and 2019 as we'll look at. So the ever downward drifting green line shows that the negative Fed funds rate has to continue and it's actually getting more and more negative. There's a time when it was just minus one, then minus two, then minus three for a short while. And now today again, back to minus two. The trend is downwards because technological deflation is taking over. The economics profession is ill-equipped to grasp this, both intellectually and spiritually inequipped to grasp this, and therefore they don't get it, even though this Wuja shadow rate is published on a Federal Reserve website. Now, when the Federal Reserve misguidedly started raising interest rates starting in 2016 and then started to raise rapidly in 2018 and 19, that caused a major market correction and they had to start reversing. And then the COVID crisis hit and what occurred on March 15th, 2020 is what I describe as the Netscape moment of economics. They went from 1.5% all the way to zero in a single day and started printing money again. The money printing had stopped and interest rates were rising in the few years before the Netscape moment. And now things are back to what they should be, which is a 0% Fed funds rate, the blue line, and the green line, strongly negative, minus two. And note that minus two is actually less than it was here back in 2014. That's why the amount of money printing, while seemingly high, is still proportionately not as much as it was in 2014, 2015. So there's no chance of hyperinflation now. If that didn't cause hyperinflation, this really will not. Now, the green line has to get above zero or at least at zero for the Fed funds rate to ever even rise. Note that when the Fed started to taper money printing, when they misguidedly started to stop money printing, they finally stopped it and then started to raise the Fed funds rate and they started to get back to what they thought was normal. And you can read all my archives where I say, no, this is gonna be reversed. They're gonna be printing, mark my words, Fed funds rate will be zero again and they'll be printing again. I said that through 2017, 18 and 19 as all of my readers at the Futurists know. And now things are what they should be, which is a zero Fed funds rate 
and money printing. And it's never going to be positive. You're never going to have this positive for a long time again. Mark my words, that's just not going to happen. Now internationally, which is the correct metric, that is what we should look at next. So I go to the monetary creation report that I often cite in other videos by Yardeni Research, monthly balance sheets. So the US, as we saw, stopped printing money in 2015 and actually started to deprint Whereas all these other central banks did not deprint at any point because they know better. They don't have the ideological baggage that the US has. That Fed funds rate has to be 3% and quantitative easing is temporary. And guess what? They had to reverse everything they did and get back to as though they had never undid any printing at all. While the other central banks kept rising. And these are the four individual central banks, of course, the red being the United States Federal Reserve. When you take the sum of all four, note that even though the US had stopped printing and started reverse printing, other central banks were printing more, so the U.S. reduction in quantitative easing did not matter. Only when the other central banks went flat and the U.S. was negative did you actually see this flattening. And this caused a major market correction late 2018, 2019. And of course, they had to undo the damage that they did and start printing more again. And now it's back to the trend line. Note this gentle exponential trend line, which is what it should be. That's one of the primary themes of this channel. Money printing has to rise exponentially just to offset technological deflation. Hyperinflation is really the last thing anyone should worry about. When you look at the percentage year over year change, it's even more stark. The other central banks of the world had to do double duty to make up for the deprinting that the US was doing. The US was actually unwinding its money printing, so other central banks had to pick up the slack to keep the world positive. When they stopped doing that, presumably from US pressure, the world went negative, went negative, and that was really, really wrong. It caused all kinds of problems, and now finally there is a healthy spring back and back to the normal zone of 16 to 24% that I often say. Natural annual growth and quantitative easing has to be somewhere between 16 to 24% a year. That is the healthy level that offsets technological deflation, and that is a wonderful thing because now we are growing at that rate from a large base. Speaking now in June 2021, the next 12 months, just to keep up, have to do at least five trillion more dollars of printing. That's gonna happen in the next 12 months, five trillion or more. And that's a good thing and there still will not be hyperinflation. So we go back to the Wuja shadow rate page. This will be in the description box below, but I urge anyone who's really curious about interest rates and how money printing actually depresses interest rates into what becomes a negative Fed funds rate, this is the place to start looking. Now here is the problem. The central banks of the world, because they still think money printing is temporary, they're buying bonds and not only creating these negative interest rates, but actually affecting the entire concept of the bond market. I have another video in this tile over here that discusses why $17 trillion worth of bonds worldwide have a negative interest rate. The solution is much more obvious. Just print money in the form of cash and send it directly to people. It's really that simple. All market forces are going to force central banks to do that over time, but I've been saying that that should be done for about 10 years now. And eventually I will be vindicated as the first person to envision that this was the evolution of where money was going to go. But fine, they're gonna learn the hard way and cause a lot of trouble for people and a lot of market volatility in between that doesn't need to be caused because economists should not be entrusted with decisions that affect the real lives of real people because economists are just very theoretical eggheads. They're academics. You would not go for a surgery with a surgeon who had only read books about doing surgery and never actually done a real surgery. Yet we entrust economic policy to people who are so academic and so theoretical like that. And that's why the Federal Reserve and other central banks of the world, they don't even use research that they themselves produce. They still produce those dot plots that say the Fed funds rate is going to be 3% long term going forward, plus 3%, meaning over here, a level it has not been for ages and ages and is completely against this very stark downward trend that we see. And this downward trend is a favorable thing because that means money printing can rise exponentially and net wealth creation, net of inflation is also rising exponentially. So this was a pretty esoteric subject, but for those interested, I hope you found this useful and enlightening. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.